My name is Sherry, and I have the privilege of serving as the office business manager here at Living Praise Christian Church. At LPCC, our message of unconditional love and integrity abounds as we glorify God, building people of purpose, power, and praise. Thank you for connecting with us today. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We believe God has a word prepared just for you. So let's dive into today's message. Oh my God, my God, the manifestation is here. And uh, woo, that was incredible. I was here worshiping and I got a word from the Lord. When this song was going forth, the Lord said the worship conference the Ignite Your Praise is in preparation for the suddenly of September. You better hear me what I say. Suddenlies are going to take place. I want you to be in the house. We're coming out of August into September, accepting what God wants to lay out and work through and put in our hands. And I'm telling you, suddenlies for September. We got it. Okay, we got it. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome. And uh, we're getting ready to go into the word. So Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives and through our lives. And thank you that we have these platforms that we can still stay connected as an assembly, as a congregation and worship you and get a download of your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for using us today. Use me as a vessel of clay. Use my mind, my mouth, my heart to minister the accuracy of our Father's ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, take that Bible and let's make a good confession, okay? I think they're going to put it up so we can do it uh, together. Here it is. This is my Bible. Okay, let me count you down. One, two, three. This is my Bible. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. I have absolutely everything my Bible says I have. For I am a believer, not a doubter. For faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Everybody shout it. Amen. All right, let's get right into this word today. I want to get this download into you. Pastor Linda actually started off talking about the storms of life. And uh, this message that we've been talking about, the assembly line, I went into great detail last week concerning what that entailed. And, and, and simply put, it means to do things the way that God has created them to flow, function, that would bring you in to purpose, Right. She talked about these storms and how they gather and uh, the, uh, the winds and the rains. And if, if, you, if you're not careful, how they can, can uh, stall and they can present obstacles and they can present burdens. We've gone through some tough times here in the last two months. And we have to understand how to navigate this time. I want you to listen to me very closely as we teach the word of God, because we are made for the moment. We have been created. The assembly line, God instilled in us the capacity to believe, the capacity to pursue, the capacity to pray through. God did this in his creation of us. So let's start the lesson, and I want you to take notes, especially those things that are going to impact your life, gravitate toward them, lay hold on them, document them, recite them, because this is your day of victory. Now, in Genesis 126, let's get started. Uh, I'm only going to hold you for about 35 minutes in the Word uh, so that, so that uh, we can finish our day up with rejoicing and worshiping God. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. S assembly line. In his image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God blessed them 
And God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we see here God's assembly line. We see the creation from the master's hand, created male and female in his own image, created them to both have dominion over the works of his hand. God blessed them to function with these innate uh, uh, functions that produce purpose, to be fruitful, multiply and replenish and subdue the earth. So you are blessed with a function that produces God's purpose in your life. Staying with divine purpose is what it takes to succeed in building, living, and leaving a legacy for the next generation. We've been given a mandate to leave an inheritance for our children's children. So legacy building is about being mindful of this opportunity and the responsibility we have to serve the purposes of God in our generation, leaving a legacy for the next generation. So legacy builders, this is our time our time to use our faith, our spiritual gifts to bring about breakthrough, manifestation. My, I, I, I don't even go, want to go there to that manifestation because we've already heard from God that a supernatural suddenly is on the way. So, so according to our faith, be it unto us. We are legacy builders here to make an impact on the earth to be salt and light, to win our faith fight, to soar to new heights and leave a legacy for the next generation. That's why we must understand the assembly line. It means an organized and coordinated way of doing things. It's the method or procedure or practice that God himself exercised in creating all things. God creates with order. He has a method that he has chosen to bring about his intent and his purpose. The day we live in has brought about discontentment. It's brought about chaos, about uh, confusion to God's design. And they have tried to develop their own system of altering what God has created. The enemy works with mankind to change the design so that he could sabotage the purpose of the function. But no matter what mankind does, God's design is the best design for manifestation of purpose. When we operate in purpose, we are fulfilled and we are satisfied. We understand the enemy, when he hit the earth, he came with his agenda to foil the purposes of God by attacking his man, who, who, who was Adam, called the son of God. But he wanted to lift himself up as God, got kicked out of heaven, here in the earth. Adam didn't kick him out, but fell to his seduction. But I have to reiterate here, as Jesus has come to restore order, that there is only one God. The enemy will try to get you to compromise honoring the one God in heaven and in earth. Jesus is our example of how to honor the Lord on earth because he woke the earth as the son of man, especially when he was confronted with adversity, with compromise, with challenges. Jesus showed us by example what we needed to do. In Luke 4 and 5, and we, we see the example of the Lord and the devil taking him up into the high mountains, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give you and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. To whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou for, therefore thou would worship, <laughs> fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus actually said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. We must embrace the established order of the creator to be successful on the earth. We can't change his agenda to our own agenda or the enemy's agenda. You and I have to be, we, ha we, we, we have been appointed 
to live in this dispensation. So because he chose us for this time, we cannot allow the enemy to shake us or break us or remove us from the calling and election that's on our lives. Jesus would not allow Satan to seed him with compromise to dishonor God. God is God and he has given us this opportunity to live life. We do not give ourselves life. Man did not give himself life. I want to come from, well, we have Old Testament, but I have New Testament scripture. I want you to look at Acts chapter 17 and 28. We're lodging this inside of our spirit man. For in him, we live and move and have our being. As certain of also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring for as much then as we are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, stone, graven by art and man's devices. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. You know who we're talking about, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we understand through scripture, God has given us life, breath, and all things. He does not need anything from us, but we need everything from him. So the creature must give honor to the creator. Ooh, and that's what the enemy is trying to stop. How do you honor the creator? We honor him with our obedience. We honor him with believing, through believing him. God's foremost desire is for you to believe him. We honor him through worship. We honor him through service. Listen to, to this now. We are called to be fruit bearers. We are called to be productive in this world, in our lifetime. We're only given certain timing that we are to be fruitful. Let me give you some, some uh, background scripture. The reason that God has created systems, kingdom systems and processes is so that you and I, as we've gone through the assembly line, have been given the capacity and the potential to bear much fruit. Uh, John 15, one says, I am the true vine. My father is the husband man, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. I don't want to be on that side of the fence. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. So even though you're born fruit, God is looking for more fruit. Text it up, write it. Let your friends see you. You got this message down in your heart. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you, saith the Lord. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. So you see the relationship with the Lord Jesus must be in contact. You must be under his lordship, not just know about him, but to know him. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Somebody posted up, I am a fruit bearer for the Lord. Then he goes on to say, for without me, you can do nothing. Wow. Now, now let's go into the next verse. Now we understand clearly verse six, why a person is cast forth and burned when not connected to the Lord, who is the word made flesh. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words, watch it, abide in you, you shall ask what you will. Somebody post it. Not what others' opinion of me are. Not what others put a limitation on me about. Not what others say that I can and cannot do. Not what others say I can and cannot have. They do not have the last word on you and me. Jesus, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be 
my disciples. I done got happy on this. I, oh, my Jesus. Somebody wave your hands to the Lord. Let him know. Okay, I see it. I see it. I get carte blanche when I'm doing my purpose. That's why the devil comes to interrupt the function so the purpose cannot be produced so that you cannot walk in your promise. Jesus, we have been appointed to live in this dispensation according to the book of Acts. This is not free-flowing, liberated, non-persecuting, non-affliction decade. This is the end time. And God trusted you in this time. So we can't give up, lose heart, get lazy about our assignment in the kingdom. The enemy will bring so many trials that he will wear you out and his hope is to make you quit and disconnect. But here come Paul to the Galatians in Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That's why you don't fail to labor and to do service. Remember, God said, I am not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love in which you have shown toward my name in that you minister toward the saints and do minister. Woo! Hey! We don't let anything defer us from our covenant with God. He exhorts, don't you be weary in well-doing. What does it mean to be weary? I looked up that word in the Greek and it almost like a choking word. Ek, 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 ka, ek. That's right. That's what it is. Ek, ek, ka, ek. Ah, it's to be bad, to be weak, ek. Ooh. By implication, to fail in your heart, to faint, to be weary. One scripture says that the enemy goes about to wear out the saints because the saints are the only thing holding back the judgment. It also means to turn out to be a coward. Oh God, to lose one's courage. You don't want to lose courage in this day and time, but he will come in like a flood to take away your courage. You will cease to be confident. Therefore, you will not move for God in boldness. It means to be faint hearted to faint or be in despondency in view of a trial or difficulty. James told us, he said, he said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Paul said, I count it joy. Uh, now I know when I'm weak, that is when he is strong. So I rejoice in tribulation. Ladies and gentlemen, do not let your losses cause you to quit in this season for in due season you will reap suddenly are coming in the month of September <laughs> so don't you be weary don't be remiss don't be slowful in your duty you have a responsibility to God who created you he says, even if it delays, don't get lazy. Don't you quit. In due season, you will reap if you don't faint. So you will reap for the good that you do if you don't faint. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Fainting is giving up. Fainting is quitting. Fainting is to relax on your efforts. So, so he exhorts us, don't be weary in well-doing. What do you mean well-doing? Well, I looked up both words. Well is uh, kalos, to do good, literally or morally. It means to have value and virtue, to be honest, to be worthy. That which is good, that which is beautiful. Oh God, doing is to make something happen, to do, to abide, to agree, to appoint, to avenge to band together. So don't allow the enemy to disconnect you from your source by causing you to faint, lose heart, give up, or quit. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I sent the Son of God that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So don't you run from God when you're going through or you've messed up. You run to God because whatever you need is in God. Let's, let's, let's reference it. Let's, te let's run a, a textual confirmation in Philippians 4, 6. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything. I told my wife something. I said, people are making bad choices 
not understanding that at the end of that choice is a reciprocatory uh, 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 calculation uh, that, that is already in nature that must come back to them. With every choice is a determination of a reciprocation already planned out. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then look what he says, and the peace of God. So I may be under attack, but the peace of God. I may be persecuted, but the peace of God. When I take things to God, the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Where is the battlefield? It's in my mind. The enemy raises up thoughts to exalt his agenda against God's agenda. We must cast that down. We have been created and appointed for such a time as this. Somebody say, I'm here on purpose because God has created me to fulfill his will. Now, now, I, I'm, I'm coming close where I have to start bringing us to a close, but I'm so excited. I'm so in expectation of next week. I'm in expectation of uh, ignite, uh, ignite uh, the worship. Uh, raise the praise, ignite the worship, raise the praise. You understand when you start praising God, his presence show up. Do you understand when you start praising God, your confusion leaves and clarity shows up. Do you understand when you start praising God, the devil leaves? Jesus, sudden leaves are coming for this congregation. We have been created and appointed for such a time as this. So Paul tells us how to traverse the time in peace and stay productive in the earth, which is our mandate from God. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. What? He didn't tell you to think in anxiety, to think in worry, to have emotional fear and anxiety. He did not tell you to do that. Let not your heart be troubled. Think on these things. Control your mind. Control and manage your emotions. Your breakthrough is almost manifested. Jesus, keep your mind straight. Keep your mind stayed on God and he'll keep you in perfect peace. Keep your mind on your purpose. Ah, and the promise will manifest in you. How do we stay productive when we're under affliction, under persecution, under attack, under overwhelm? How do we do it? I'm going to give you some things that you need to write down right now to stay productive in a time of war. Ah! In a time of storm, this is how you stay productive. Number one, develop a greater God consciousness. You keep trying to do all this stuff on your own. Yes, you do. You keep trying to traverse the earth with your own strength. Paul ran into that, he said that messenger of Satan has buffeted me from city to city. And God said, listen, Paul, my grace. Oh, it's sufficient for me, for you. And I'm saying for me and for you too. Develop a God, a deeper God consciousness. Develop your belief in his miraculous, supernatural uh, power to intervene on your behalf. That's number one, develop a God consciousness. Number two, establish structure and order in your life. What do I get order from? Doctrine, the doctrines of God is the order of God. When you want to know God's order, you go to the doctrine. Jesus laid out the doctrine. Establish structure and order in your life. Chaos and confusion blankets what the enemy is doing. You're confused because you can't see why things are happening. And I'm here to tell you, your life may be out of order. Bring it back into order with God. Number three, establish a firm commitment to solid foundational principles to live by. You have to live by the word, not by the philosophy of gurus. 
Only the word of God will set you free. You should know the truth and the truth will make you free. Work the principles. Number four, create an environment conducive to perpetual growth and development and creativity. Listen, we're doing all in our power to cause you to go to your next level. We open up the transformation mentoring culture. We have developed personal development courses. We have partnership impartations for your marriage to get better. You singles must get on the front lines of the kingdom. Create an environment conducive to perpetual growth. If you're not growing, you're dying. Hey, you want to be developing every day of your life. Why? Because then the capacity he put inside of you as his child to create will start flowing from you. Number five, plan and implement strategies for abundance. Hey, somebody say hey back to me, please. <laughs> implement the strategies for abundance. It is God who has given you the power to get well. You have to have abundance to be able to do kingdom works. Lord, this helps you with your legacy mandate, leaving an inheritance for your children's children. I don't know, listen, you got to stop listening to the world who wants you to be poor, wants you to live in poverty, wants you to have nothing so that you can leave nothing. Stop listening to the liars. Stay with the word. I'm showing you how to be productive, which is the mandate upon your life. This is how you've been created to flow. Listen, number six, implement a management system to sustain productivity. Do not spend everything you have. There should always be some for tithes, some for saving, and then you have your bills that you pay, and then you have your, your things that you need to take care of and invest. Put yourself on a budget. <laughs> Number seven, always incorporate a regimen of rest. That's how people make silly mistakes because they're too delusional. They've been overworked. Uh, They've been exhausted and can't think right. And they're saying yes under pressure. Rejuvenation is the key to productivity. It helps you to be efficient, effective, and excellent. My God, my time is almost up. Ooh, Jesus. Somebody put your hands up and say, God, I am a fruit bearer. I'm a kingdom fruit bearer. You have designed me on your assembly line to bear fruit no matter the season. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. In Israel, in captivity, the Egyptians put more, they wore them up, put more burdens upon them. But the more burden they put upon them, the more they increased, the more they grew. They outgrew, they outnumbered the Egyptians. When you're in God and pressure is coming on you, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, um, how you say, uh, decrease you. It does not destroy you. It multiplies you. Joseph was sent by his brothers to the pit and sold into slavery, then lied upon and put into prison. Ha! The adversity increased his gift to where he was called by the Pharaoh, by the king. Ended up second in charge. Adversity is not meant to take you down. Get that out of your head. If you're in adversity, you at your season of growth. It's your growth season. Please write it in. It's your growth season. Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Somebody's getting ready to multiply on another level. Uh, you, 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 you're getting ready because your promotion is here. God has decreed it that this is your due season. Oh, Jesus, I got to quit, y'all. But this has been outstanding. I am so excited about what we're looking at because I know all the attacks. I know all the losses. I know all of this that the enemy has thrown at us. 
is because he wants to deflect our attention away from what God is doing in us and through us. It's our finest moment where sin abound, grace much more abounds. I declare the grace of God over your life in this moment. I declare God is doing big things in you and through you in this day. I decree that you would leave a legacy and a legacy and an inheritance that won't be wiped away. It will increase with each generation that you have produced today. The anointing of breakthrough is on you, Jesus. Lord have mercy. I don't know about y'all, but that anointing is all over me. I hope you're receiving right now. You can receive right through the online service right now. Oh, don't be afraid. Put up your hands. Receive from the Holy Ghost this double anointing for this end time productivity. God is getting ready to increase your life to do great things through your life. Manifestation is here. I receive it in Jesus' name. How about you? Do you receive it? Do you receive it? My God, my God. Now listen, if you're not born again, God wants you in his family. I want to invite you to get your life aligned with kingdom. And the way into God's kingdom is through his son. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If you have not confessed the Lord with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, I offer you the appeal today. Salvation and rededication, get your life right. If you're a Christian, but you're kind of wandering out there, get your life right. Rededicate your life right now to God. I have monitors on. You can talk to them, type in. I'm ready to make a decision. Listen, I have people online church. I have people in person church. I want you to be a part of the church family. It's time for you to come home now. It's time for you to belong now. It's time for you to be supported, undergirded, and strengthened now. It's time for you to join. It's time for you to become a fellow laborer in the vineyard that is called Living Praise Christian Church. Hallelujah. It's connection moment. And uh, I, I need you, if you want to, text LPCC decision to 54244. One of the online facilitators will catch the link and uh, talk to you. Just put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this has been an awesome day. Even though Tornado Hillary came our way. <laughs> Woo! Today, God has had his way. I want you to say it to yourself. Today, God has had his way in my life, in the life of my friends and family, and live in praise. We didn't miss a beat, y'all. We did not miss a beat. Now, in my closing, I want you to stay safe. Uh, don't be getting out in the elements if you don't have to because they're saying more is coming. More rain, more flooding, more winds. So we want you to make good choices. Remember, God has to honor the choice that you make. And every choice has a designated return. Make good choices, get good returns. God is not more. What a man sows, that shall he also do. Now, listen, we're getting ready to close out, but I want you to look at the reel, the announcement reel that's coming. I pray over you safety today. I pray over you delight and harmony and agreement in your life and with uh, your friends, family. I pray for the doors of increase to, uh, to come open, that abundance flood into your life, that you would be bold enough and encouraged that you would do the work of the Lord. I call you blessed, highly favored. Stay tuned now for these closing remarks. <laughs>